Oh, there you are. Usually Haley reminds me or Abigail reminds me. Okay. So the first thing I want you to talk, take a look at is something called the amortization table. Has anyone ever heard the term amortization table or an amortize a loan? Put a Y in chat if you ever heard something as an amortization table. All right, so no one's heard about this, which is fine. You guys have no reason to hear about this yet. Okay, so amortization is the process of gradually reducing a debt through equal regular payments. Now, the last couple of days we've been doing, well, yesterday, we did a whole bunch of calculations about uh, payments. So, like, for example, like a, yesterday we did something about like a car. Um, if we paid monthly on a car and we borrowed $10,000 on a car, or we want to go down to zero, and we took six years. Oops. Here, here's a car loan for $10,000, 7.5% interest, compounded monthly. We're going to make monthly payments, and it's going to take uh, five years to pay off. And we know our payment's going to be $200.38 per payment. Okay. So you guys understand what we just did there. You have your payment, you have your previous value. We know we're going to pay this much. Okay. Amortization table shows you how you're paying down that loan. Okay. So I'm going to go here first. And we'll do that exact same loan. Okay. Uh, this is a mortgage calculator, but it will work the exact same as a car loan. All loans are pretty much the exact same. So I'm going to write in that same information here. Um, there we go, I'll zoom in some. My interest rate was 7.5. My, my period is gonna be five years. I'm gonna make monthly payments. Uh, for right now, our term of our mortgage, we're just gonna leave at five. We didn't pay any first, okay? This is if you had a uh, down payment over here. We'll go through some stuff like that. So here is our loan, okay? Um, so it says mortgage amount, but you can figure that as a car loan for $10,000. Our interest rate is 7%. We're going to pay it off in five years. We're going to pay it monthly. Uh, this is our, our term of our thing. I'll go over that in a second. So here it kind of gives you a summary of everything that's happened. Okay. So 60 months. Mortgage payments of 199.84. We didn't pay anything. Our principal, so how much we borrowed was $10,000. Our total cost of our loan that we'll pay was $11,990.13. And our interest charge, how much interest we paid in that loan is $1,990. Does all this information make sense to everyone so far? We've kind of covered this mathematically already, but this is it's putting it in a chart for us. Put a Y in chat if that makes sense. Okay. When you guys look through this, I want you to look over the amortization period, so the right hand side part. Okay. So here is. Um, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to look at the summary report. This will show us our amortization table. Okay. So the amortization table or payment schedule shows us where our money is going. Okay. So in the very first month, we pay $199. Okay. Of that $199, $61 goes towards the interest that went that accumulated on that loan. 
So we pay off the interest that happened on that money we borrowed first. That's the $61. Then the rest of the money that we paid goes on to the principal paying down the $10,000. And at, at the very end, we now owe this much left on our loan. We owe 9861 now you might think, why isn't it lower? I paid $200 on my car loan. Shouldn't that be like $9,800? But it's not because during that month, we accumulated $61 in interest on that $10,000. So whenever we make a payment, we pay our interest first, then we pay down the principal. And that's how we get this number. Now the next month, we pay $199 again. Our interest payment this time is $60.69. And our principal payment, what's going down, we're trying to force that money down is $139. And our new total of our loan is as such. Then next time, next month we pay $199.84 again. Our interest this time is $5. $59 and our principal payment is 140. Do we have any questions of what I've shown you over the first three months of our loan? Do you understand how the math is working here where we pay off our interest first because there's interest going onto the loan that we're borrowing and then this is how much is going towards our um, our principal bringing down that $10,000. Put a Y in chat if that makes sense or any questions you have about this. Okay. So what is the principal payment? Is that like the original thing or? Well, think about it like this. I'll, I'll bring it over here real quick. Um, so. Here's a loan right here. These are things you should be learning, I agree. I wish there were more in math. You get a lot more of this in the college math than the, um, than the academic slash mixed math. I agree. So if we look at this chart here, this is a, a chart someone's made up. They took out a loan for $500. Their regular payment on this loan is $84.80 interest rate of 6%, okay? So if you look at their first payment here, here's their first payment. But in that month, the interest rate is this much per month, 0.05. In that month, $2.50 of interest occurred on the $500. That's how much interest grew on that $500. So of your first payment, 8480, you take off 250 to pay for the interest and we get rid of the interest. Then the rest of it, so we have $82 left after we pay the $2.50 of interest. Then we take that $82 off the principal of $500. How much do we owe? So we're left with 417 left to O. Are you good so far, Dominic? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, then the next month on that 417, $2.09 of interest happens. So you pay off $2.09 and the rest of your money goes down. It goes towards paying off your actual loan that you borrowed and so on and so forth. Now, a lot of the time, your last payment may be a little bit odd. You'll have an odd last payment. Uh, so you can see here, the very first year, we paid $1,700 in interest. Well, that's principal. And we paid six, 681 in interest. Okay. Then the next year after that, if you look, we pay a little bit more in principal and we pay less in interest because 
there's less money and now we're at six thousand dollars here there's less money um going towards there's less interest being grown on six thousand dollars than there was on ten thousand dollars what oops what and you can see our interest payment keeps going down every month it gets a little bit smaller and smaller and smaller because our loan is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see the very last payment. Oh, late very last payment was perfect in this one. But sometimes you get a last payment that's a little bit off. OK. So do we understand kind of how to read this amortization table? As it goes. And we'll take a look at a bunch of them as we kind of grow here. Um, so we did this one already. So we did a purchase of a car for $10,000. Um, payment years was five, interest was, uh, what did I do, 7.5? I'm just going to split these in two. Oh, come on. No, I want you on this page. And this one. Okay. So if we look at our summary page here, now always look at the right one. So when you get a mortgage, you, you get a mortgage. So when I went to the bank, we got a mortgage, but you only sign up for a mortgage in like uh, a small amount of time compared to the to the mortgage. Like mortgages can be like 20 year mortgages, but you may sign up for a five year term. So for the next five years, I'm going to pay this much. Okay. Then after five years, you go back to the bank or the mortgage broker and you make a new deal. Sometimes it works out when we first bought our house. I knew go, we got a, we had a mortgage rate of let's say like 2.3%. Okay. Five years later, when we went to renegotiate, or like three years into the mortgage, the average mortgage rate was like 3.8%. So I was on the low side. Now, right before last year, I think it was like two years ago, I did a mortgage where we did a three-year mortgage at like 2.5%, let's say. But with the economy right now and people lending out money, the mortgage rate is actually like at 1.8%. So I'm a paying, like I'm paying a little bit more but you can't kind of break your mortgage because you have to pay to break your mortgage. So my monthly payment in this one would be 199.84. Oops. My total interest paid, how much did interest that I pay here is 1990.13. So my total payment was $11,000. Uh, oops. 990.13. So even though my car loan was for $10,000, in the end, I paid $11,000, pretty much, oops, pretty much $12,000 for the car. Does that make sense to everyone so far? How I kind of pulled that information out of there? Okay, so let's change our interest rate on our, our car here. Okay, do we want a higher interest rate or lower interest rate? Well, let's say higher. Let's say I was, I got a credit card when I was young and I didn't pay it off right away. So now I'm gonna owe 9% interest, okay? So a little bit higher. And what's my results here? Okay. Now, uh, before I go with here, here's the here's a here's a diagram of like our loan amount and how fast it goes down each month, right? So you can see after 20 payments, you're now going to owe this much. After 40 payments, this much, and so on and so forth. And here's how much uh, my regular payment will go to principal. And the red is how much goes to interest. So let's see how much just changing that interest rate changed it. So we changed it to 9%. And 
our monthly payments went up to 206.79. The interest I paid went up to 2,407.23. So pretty much $500 more interest on that increased loan. And now I owe 12,000 altogether 407.24. Does that make sense to everyone? So it's logical that if I raise my interest rate, right, I'm going to pay more over the loan. Now, what would happen if I increase the term of it? So let's keep it at 9%. Okay. But instead of paying it off in five years, let's say I couldn't afford a monthly payment of 206. So the dealer goes, okay, to get your monthly payment under $200, how about we do it over seven years instead? Do we have a prediction about how much our interest, is our interest gonna go up? Our, our total interest pay gonna go up or down if I spread out the loan over a longer time? You think my interest paid is going to be higher or lower? Okay, up. Now this is a tool too. If you're using, if you're going for a car loan, you can you can play with this, right? And it will tell you in a nice little summary. So here we go. We have seven years this time. So we added two years to it. So our monthly payment now costs one hundred and sixty dollars. Right, which someone might think off the top of their head, like, oh, I'm only paying 160 a month instead of 200 a month. I'm saving money, right? I'm saving money because I'm paying less per month. But you're paying longer, so you're actually going to pay $3,444.91. $1,000 more by extending your loan two years. So your total is going to be 13,444.91. Okay. Can you guys make a prediction if I shorten the term? What if I paid it off in in three years? Is my total interest paid? Because I'm really looking at this last number. How much am I going to pay for the car full out? All right. Although if you can't afford, if you can only afford $160 a month, this may be what you need to do, right? But let's say I do it for three years. Um, air, okay. I need to move this back to three years. 10,000, okay. If I pay this off in three years, right? I'm going to write this in a different font. Uh, where's my colors? So if I pay this off in three years instead, my monthly payment is going to go up, right? My monthly payment's going to go up to 317.23. Because I'm paying off the loan quicker, but my interest paid, how much am I going to be paying out over the long run? What's my interest paid here? $1,420.40. Okay. So now I'm only, I'm back to paying 1000 So do you see how like adjusting the term or, so if we pay for less time, you'll pay less interest. If you pay over a longer time, you'll pay more interest, okay? But then it depends on what your needs are, right? If you can't afford the $317, maybe it's better to, maybe this person can only afford $160. So because they can only afford 160, this is how much they'll pay in interest over a longer haul. 
<clears throat> Any questions right now with this? Let's do a house. And let's scare all of you. All right, so let's look at uh, oh, what's the real to MLS. Where do we want to buy a house, folks? Give me a neighborhood. Do we want to buy a farm? Do we want to buy? Definitely not in Guelph, Ontario. Guelph's not Guelph's somewhat expensive, but not not as expensive as I Toronto. Mean, I know, but for Guelph, for a tiny city, is the market is through the roof. Yeah. So let's pick a random house. Let's pick, oh my gosh. I'll tell you guys right now, I bought my house for under 300,000 back in 2010. And now just because of where the house market, we probably could sell it for 600,000, which is nuts. So let's look at this one. A nice little something something for 600,000. Yowzers. Okay, so let's do our mortgage on this one. Let's refresh this page. So let's do let's do a starter house. Let's do one that's three hundred fifty thousand. Okay, I don't want to scare people off too much. Now interest rate, let's go at like two point five percent, and we're going to amortize this. We're going to pay it off over. 25 years. Okay. We're going to pay it off monthly. Right now, we're going to start playing with these things. The term here doesn't matter right now for like, we're going to look at the right hand side. You can set this term to anything. Now, with a house, you should put down a down payment. Generally, a down payment of 10% is well regarded. So, 10% of this would be you'd have to put a down payment of $35,000. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about how I have it set up right now? Okay, so let's calculate this out. So we're going to purchase a home for 350,000. Need one more zero. We put a 35,000 down payment on it with an interest rate of 2.5%, I believe, for 25 years was our period, okay? Now we're gonna play with a couple things here to kind of get to know it. So, I'm going to copy these numbers here real quick. So our monthly payment for this house, is $1,567.88. So that's your monthly mortgage payment. Over the life of your loan, you're going to pay over that 25 years, 92944 So 92000 pretty much $93,000 of interest on your mortgage. With your house finally in the very end costing $442,000. Okay. So that $350,000 house is actually costing you $443,000 in the end. Okay. And let's look at our amortization table. Can you guys see my numbers on the amortization table or do you want me to make it bigger? Put a B in chat if you need my need to be bigger. All right. I'm going to make it bigger so I can see it easier. Okay, so. We're going to ignore month one. 
because month one is where we have that $35,000 payment plus our mortgage payment. OK. So let's look at month two. OK. So when we pay the $1,567, 600 of that goes towards our interest. And then we pay down the loan $900, which will then bring our loan down to $313,000. And you see how every month this mortgage payment, the interest paid on it goes down a little bit. It's pretty much going down like $2 at a time, two less dollars at a time every month. And remember, we're doing this over 25 years. OK, but if you look at the trend, let's look at year one. We paid seven thousand dollars in seven thousand seven hundred in interest. Forty six thousand dollars on our principal. Now, if I scroll down to let's go to year year 14, we only pay three thousand dollars and our interest amount goes up. And you can see how every year our interest amount goes down. This year we only pay $1,000 on our interest and $17,000 on our mortgage. And it goes down and down from there. Okay. And you can see how our last mortgage payment was only $294. Now, I'm going to switch something up here because you don't have to pay back your mortgage monthly. You could pay it. Let's pay it bi weekly. Okay, and let's see the difference we have there. So if we do it, bi weekly, I'm going to change my color here. Bi-weekly, now bi-weekly means every two weeks. Our mortgage payment, um, did we do that right? Oh, we need to change our numbers up again. 350, one, two, three. Good interest rate of 2.5%. Do over 25 years, five year term, there we go. And we did a $35,000 payment. All right, let's do that one. So now, now you're paying this bi-weekly. So now you're paying 723.35 every two weeks. So realistically, that 723.35 times two for each month. So you're looking at $1,400 a month. So a little bit less than before, right? Our interest we're going to pay is a little bit less as well. And our total amount we're going to pay is a little bit less, but not that much less, right? A couple hundred dollars. So once again, the more payments you make, the more frequent payments you make, the less interest. Now, what's really cool is you have something called accelerated biweekly. And if you do accelerate it bi-weekly, it actually gives one extra payment per year on your loan. Okay. So if I do accelerated, uh, accelerated bi-weekly, each week, each year, you pay one extra payment on your loan. Because you pay instead of 26, you kind of pay 27 <laughs> times. Here, out you go, please. No, no, I'm still teaching. You actually pay 27 times a year instead of 26. Or you pay 26 times, but you add a little bit to each payment. So it's as if you paid 27 times a year. So you can see the difference in our numbers here. Our monthly payment is 783.5. Nine four. And you see the difference between this number and this number. So you pay a little bit more each 
month or each week bi-weekly but you actually pay one more time per year so it actually takes down the amount of time you have to pay and look at you save ten thousand dollars by paying what's that about fifty sixty dollars sixty dollars more every two weeks you save ten thousand dollars in the length of your loan Does that make sense to everyone? I know there's a lot of me talking and you kind of watching today. But it's pretty neat how just that one little change makes a big difference. Now for credit cards. Um, these are all Government of Canada websites that we're going to. <coughs> So this is kind of like we talked about credit cards already. So let's take a look at the thousand dollar option here. So we bought something for a thousand dollars. When you use a credit card, you have something called minimum payment. Okay. And minimum payment is ten dollars a month or three percent of whatever you owe, whichever is bigger. If ten dollars is bigger, or three percent of what you owe is bigger, that's what's going to be. All right. So, what if we made a minimum payment each month? We just made the minimum payment of our credit card each month. That's it. That's our option A. Option B would be if we're going to pay this off. We make the um, minimum payment plus some money each month. So let's say our minimum payment, 3% of 1,000 is $30, okay? So that's why it has a 30 there. What if we paid $30 plus our $30 minimum payment each month? That'd be a total of $60 there, okay? Or we could pay it regularly with like $100 a month. And it'll show us how long it's gonna take to pay off each loan. So here's the kind of the calculations here. So if we paid the minimum payment each month, it would take us 10 years to pay off that loan, that credit card debt. It would cost us a total of $1,700. And we would have paid almost $800 interest by just making minimum payments. If we would have paid $60 a month or or like minimum payment plus $30, it would take us two years and two months to pay off that loan, pay almost $200 interest, right? And we would have paid $1,193. We would have paid, would have saved six, $600 compared to this one. Now, if we pay $100 a month, we paid off in 11 months, we pay $91 in interest, and this is our total payment. Do you guys see how to calculate these? Um, how to use this this uh, payment calculator? So let's say we did. Let's say we had a. Let's go back to our two thousand dollar one. Okay. And we actually have a store loan of twenty nine percent. Okay. We have our minimum payment. We could do um, we have $2,000. Let's say we did $100 total. We minimum payment plus $50. Or we paid $250 a month under a credit card bill. OK. Um, air. What's it want then? I like that one. All right, here's our difference. So if we paid minimum payment, it would take us 31 years to pay this off. We would have paid $7,000 in interest and we would that original $2,000 would have cost us $9,257 just by making minimum payments each month. 
So minimum is not a way to pay off a loan. Okay. If you make a minimum payment plus whatever we added, what do we add? Fifty dollars above our minimum payment. It would take us three years to pay off this loan. Paid nine hundred dollars worth of interest for a total of two thousand eight hundred. But if we would have spent $250 each month to pay off this loan, take us nine months, pay $250 in interest, and there's our final total there. So you can kind of see with credit cards, they're good, but if you get behind, you're in trouble. You could lead you into trouble. Okay. That's why it's always good especially at your age to have, um, have the money in the bank before you use your credit card. And what we, I used to do is like pay for it, go home and pay my credit card right away and go from there. Um, so we did some of those. So let's take a look at your homework real quick. Do I have any questions right now about this? So here's what I want you to do is, so credit card amortization table. This right here is the, oh, can you not click on that? Shoot, you can use your phone on that. Um, if you need the websites that are in your content library under websites, uh, the TVM solver, there's the mortgage loan calculator, and there's the credit card one right there. They're also in your homework, I believe. I put them in there. Okay, so I have a couple of questions here first. So if you purchase it, you go to this website, the mortgage one, and you plug in this information. Then give me your monthly payment, the total interest you'll owe, and the final price of the house. So how much you owed all together. This one here, you plug it in again, you have a down payment, right? And I want you to compare between monthly and bi-monthly Accelerate, say monthly, bi weekly, and accelerate bi weekly. Look at that. So there's a couple of questions there, and there's a couple of car, a car purchase here. And these are all using the computer. So you're just copying down information, right? So there's no real calculation here. And then here's a credit card question for you, kind of using the same uh, idea I did before. Okay. For the car payment here, uh, I set set up three different loans, right? Ten thousand dollars, five years, paid monthly. Five years paid weekly. Ten thousand dollars. What would happen if you paid um, uh, loan three? I have to give you some more information. I think. Yeah, let me figure this out real quick on my TVM solver, so I can make sure I give you the right. I realize now you don't have all the information there. So $10,000, 19% interest, paid weekly for five years, um, 60, oops, five times 52, so it's two, 260. Oops. Fifty nine sixty four. Okay, so everyone write down this number here. So your regular payment here is fifty nine point six five. Okay. So when you go into your loan website, that's the information you'll put in there. I guess if you put in the, the other information, it'll give you back that number. Actually, let me double check that. Um, mortgage calculator, 
Mortgage and credit card and loan, same difference. We're at 19% here. We're doing five years. Paid weekly. And we're going to have no down payment. Calculate. Yep. So it'll give you the monthly information there and all the interest paid. OK. So that is officially the last lesson of the year that we have done. So all.